Hi there, and welcome back to AP Chemistry. My name is Jeremy Krug, and in lesson four, we're starting to talk about waves and charge. And so we're going to start by looking at waves. If we look at this example of a wave here, we notice that if we were to uh, take a certain point on this wave, let's take a look at the, the crest here, this top point of the wave, and compare that to the corresponding crest on the next wave, so that point right there, and we measure the distance between those two points. We're going to call that the wavelength. So that length is it's the wavelength of this wave. That's represented in chemistry with the Greek letter lambda, so it looks almost like an upside down Y. Now let's compare this with a different wave. So here we have a different wave. Uh, this time, I want you to notice that the wavelength seems to be much shorter. So we were, I suppose we could draw that on here, and that wavelength is a whole lot shorter. In fact, as a result, it seems like we have more waves crammed into this smaller space here. That means that this wave has a higher frequency. Frequency is basically defined as how many wave cycles per second you have. Now, frequency is represented in chemistry with the Greek letter nu, so it almost looks like a V there. Now, we have to remember that in, in chemistry, these waves, usually electromagnetic waves, are not stationary. These waves are not static. They're always moving. So we can imagine these waves moving along, and let's imagine that they're going to pass a particular point. So I have this line here, and we're going to imagine that these waves are passing that point. So how many waves are going to pass that point per second. That's what frequency is. And so if it were this wave here, we could say, oh, I don't know, maybe um, 10 million waves will pass that point per second. In this one, it might be only, oh, I don't know, three or four million waves. So it has a much lower frequency because it has a higher uh, wavelength. Now, we can actually compare this and, and see that wavelength and frequency are inversely proportional. And so we're going to put these together into an equation. And since electromagnetic waves, which are the type of waves that we normally talk about in chemistry, move at the speed of light, this is the equation that we're going to use. And so C represents the speed of light. C stands for celeritas, which is Latin for swiftness, and its numerical value is about 300 million meters per second, or about 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. That's the speed of light in a vacuum. That's the number that we're pretty much always going to use for that number. Now, lambda, as we said, represents the wavelength, and that's going to be measured in meters. And so make sure that you're always in meters whenever you plug that number in. The nu, as we said, represents the frequency, and frequency will be in wave cycles per second. Now, there are a few different ways to describe that, some units that we use. Uh, we can just use reciprocal seconds for that, or we can also use hertz. Hertz is the same thing as wave cycles per second or reciprocal seconds. Its abbreviation is capital H, lowercase z. So just be aware that reciprocal seconds and hertz are the same thing. We, we use those interchangeably in chemistry. Let's try an example here. Let's say we have an FM radio station that broadcasts on a frequency of 96.9 megahertz. Let's determine the wavelength of the radio waves emitted by this station's antenna. So once again, we're given the frequency and we're being asked to find the wavelength. So we can use this equation, C, equals lambda nu, so we just have to plug and chug into that equation. So C is the speed of light, 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, and the wavelength is what we're trying to solve for, lambda. So we're going to leave that as our unknown, and nu is the frequency. Now it has to be in wave cycles per second, or, or hertz. So we have 96.9 megahertz, and mega means million, so it's 96.9 million, or 96,900,000 hertz. And so now we just have to divide and solve for the, the, uh, the wavelength. So when you do that, 
we get it that it's about 3.09 meters. And so imagine if you're listening to that radio station, the waves are traveling through space with a wavelength of a little bit more than 3 meters. Let's try another example. Here we have a red laser pointer, and you can't see the number there, but the laser pointer emits light at a steady wavelength of 670 nanometers. Let me write that in here so we can see it. 670 nanometers. What frequency light is emitted by this pointer? So once again, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to have uh, C equals lambda nu, and we're just going to plug in here. So C is the speed of light, and lambda, uh, the, the wavelength is given to us this time, 670 nanometers. Now we do have to express that in meters, so you know a nanometer is uh, 10 to the minus 9th meters, so we can just take 670 times 10 to the minus 9th meters. Our calculator will convert that to regular scientific notation if you want to. And frequency, of course, is what we're trying to solve for. So we just divide this out, and we can find that the frequency is 4.5 times 10 to the 14th hertz. And so that is the frequency. Pretty high. So as we can see, the smaller or the shorter the wavelength, the higher the frequency is. And that makes sense when we think about what our wave diagram looked like at the very beginning of the lesson here. Now, let's remember that when we talk about light, we have light at a certain wavelength. Well, you know, there's this visible light spectrum that we sometimes have talked about. Maybe you've learned Roy G. Biv, you know, red, orange, yellow, uh, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Those are the main uh, colors that we think about in the in the, lights, in the visible light spectrum, but as it turns out, the visible light spectrum is really just a small part of the overall electromagnetic spectrum. So at the other end, you know, very uh, short wavelength here, high frequency, we have the gamma rays, and then X-rays and ultraviolet, and then there's that little sliver in here of visible light, infrared, and then the radio waves. And we, uh, it looks like this picture doesn't have microwaves. Microwaves are kind of in here in between the infrared and radio waves. And so we'll talk more about that later. And so be aware that we have visible light, but then we have things that are outside that visible light spectrum as well. Uh, basically, it's also light, but we just can't see it with our eyes. Now, when we think about the history of this, we can go back to a scientist by the name of Max Planck. And around the year 1900, he uh, studied electromagnetic radiation and light. He was a German physicist. And he came up with what we today call Planck's uh, postulate. And he stated that electromagnetic energy, such as light or visible light, or in invisible light too, can only be emitted in quantized form. Now you might remember this from lesson three, a few uh, videos back. What this basically means is that energy and light exist in these packets, in these quantized form. Now today, we call those packets photons. And re remember that when we talk about quantum, it's not the same as continuous. And so in a previous video, you might recall that we looked at quantum as being like a stair step. We have these steps. And so you can have a packet of light here. You can have a packet of light here and one there. But you can't have like one and a half. You can't hover in between those. You can't levitate between the steps. On the other hand, there are some things that in life that are continuous. You know, so we can think of a ramp. You can technically stand on any part of that ramp. There are not really steps involved there. Well, light energy, it's quantized. And so it, it, it exists in these little uh, packets that we're going to call photons. Now, as a result, we can actually calculate the energy of a specific photon. And it has everything to do with the frequency of that light. Now, Max Planck helped us to uh, derive this equation, where E is the energy of a single photon of that light. And we know that energy is measured in joules. Uh, since this is a single photon, we expect 
uh, that, um, that number, that value in joules, to be very, very small. It's going to be something on the order of maybe 10 to the minus 14th joules. Very, very tiny. Sometimes even smaller or a, a little bit larger than that. Now this h that we see here, that is a constant that uh, Planck helped us derive. That's called Planck's constant. It has a numerical value of about 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34th joule seconds. Now, as you can see, it's such a tiny number. This helps us to realize how uh, small of an amount of energy a single photon would have. And of course, there's our new. We, re we remember that from a previous uh, a problem here we did earlier, our last equation, that's frequency, of course, measured in wave cycles per second. That's our reciprocal seconds, or hertz, as we looked at earlier. Let's try an example. Now, before we do that, we need to realize that as long as we know or can calculate the frequency of any electromagnetic wave, if we know the frequency, well, we know Planck's constant, so we can automatically and very easily calculate the energy that's contained in a single photon of electromagnetic light. So let's try this example. We have some electromagnetic light that's being uh, emitted from an AM radio station. It says here an AM radio station broadcasts on a frequency of 1340 uh, kilohertz. Well, the question asks us to determine the energy contained per photon in its electromagnetic waves. So we know that this is the equation that we're going to use. We are given the frequency, this is, so this is a very easy uh, equation just to plug into. We're trying to solve for the energy, so we're going to leave that as our unknown. H is Planck's constant, so we can plug that in. And then nu is the uh, frequency, it has to be in hertz. Now, we have kilohertz here, so we have to multiply this by 1,000, so we're going to do that. So 1340 times 1,000 hertz. And when we multiply these two values together, we find that the energy contained in a single photon that's being broadcast from that radio station is 8.88 .88 times 10 to the negative 28th joules. So a very exceedingly tiny amount of energy. Let's try another example. During World War II, it was discovered that some pilots could detect infrared light. They found that infrared radiation at a wavelength of 1160 nanometers was interpreted by the naked eye as a pale greenish light. Calculate the energy of a single photon of this light. Now, let's think about this. You know, the equation that we just looked at had energy and Planck's constant and frequency. Well, in this equation, we're not given frequency, are we? We're given the wavelength. But we learned from the first equation that if we're given wavelength, we can figure out the frequency. So we're going to have to do a, a first step here to determine the frequency using c equals lambda nu. And then, once we know the frequency, we can plug into e equals h times nu. So let's do this first equation here first. We're going to plug that in. And so c, of course, is the speed of light that we got earlier, 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Lambda is uh, given to us in the problem here, 1160 nanometers. Now we have to convert that to meters. We know that a nanometer is you know, uh, 10 to the minus 9th, so we have to uh, multiply it by times 10 to the minus 9th meters. And of course, we're solving for nu here, so we just divide that out. And we find that the frequency of this light is 2.59 times 10 to the 14th hertz. Well, now that we know the frequency, we can plug that into the equation involving Planck's constant here, E equals H times nu. And we know we're trying to solve for the energy, so that's going to be unknown. And Planck's constant is... 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34th joule seconds. And the frequency we just got from the previous part of the problem, the 2.59 times 10 to the 14th hertz. And now we can just multiply those two by each other to find out what the energy is. So the energy is about 1.71 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. And so this is the answer.
This is the number of uh, joules or the energy in a single photon of that infrared light. Well, I hope you learned a little bit of chemistry. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't subscribed to my chemistry channel already, please do so and give me a thumbs up if you learned something. I hope to see you again here in AP Chemistry where we can learn some more chemistry together.